David, tell me, you heard about the shooting yesterday yeah. down at the encampment. Any thoughts? Well, you know, I mean, we got to have a safe community. Yeah, we got families, we got people uh, living in our community, and first and foremost, and, and a priority of our government is ensuring safe communities. So it's deeply concerning, uh, Pete, to hear, you know, gunshots of any kind, um, but associated here, uh, it's it's tragic, and it's not something. Obviously, it's it's not something that any of us stand for in this community. If I can ask, what's what's the government's stance on encampments? Well, I mean, bylaws have to be enforced, right? At the local level, we got to enforce bylaws. Um, we, as the province, have stepped up with significant funding for our social service providers. Um, you need local solutions. Obviously, I empathize uh, in today's inflationary times. It's tough. I mean, our mantra is building 1.5 million homes, ensuring people have a roof over their heads. That's a priority of this government. Um, and that's all levels, right? Uh, waiving development charges and ensuring uh, supports for increased supports for homelessness. I mean, you know, in the DC's piece, often it's, it's the difference between uh, financing a project like the Baltimore Project Habitat Humanity is doing and not. Um, but, but here you've got to enforce bylaws. You can't be enabling uh, breaking of, of laws and bylaws and uh, getting people wraparound supports. And, and Band-Aid Solutions is, does not work. And saying to Ontario, hey, this is the place to land uh, is, is not the answer we want to send either. Um, we want to ensure that we're uh, compassionate and, and here to support people. We have a shelter in town uh, where people are able to get wraparound supports and it's important uh, we direct the most vulnerable there. I know, you know not, it's not always people are seeking supports, but it is critical that we have wraparound supports for people when they need them. Last question is, there's so many different kinds, and if I can use the word right, but I mean, there's so many different kinds of homelessness. It's it's not uh, one size fits all, if I can say it that way. No, no, it's different, right? I mean, I talk to fam, I talk to seniors who are on fixed income, struggling. You know, how do you downsize? Where do you go? Um, it's fine to sell, but then where do you go after with, with the pricing today? I talk to families, you know, uh, parents who've got who, you know, who have their kids living in the basement wondering if they're ever going to have a place to call home. And I mean, it stems to what we all want. We all want to be able to support our family, regardless of what that family looks like, a place to call home. And for new Canadians too, you know, I've got a grandpa who came over here with no money in his pockets, who built and provided a family, uh, provided, I should say, a roof over the heads for the family. Um, and it was easier back then. And, and so we got to get building, got to build infrastructure to support our growing communities. Um, and to help them grow that's it's really really critical uh, no it's uh it's going well uh, we've got you know people with mental health issues addiction issues homeless issues people that are just in, in a bad situation um, housing crisis you know what we can bad situation well our rent was when our house got shut down we lived at 413 so they closed it and we were kind of out on our asses. You know. Well, no. So Transition House had pre-COVID they had 24 beds. They, COVID did, dumbed it down to 18. And then when they opened those three or six beds back up, they were holding them for the people of trans or of 413. Which they're not supposed to do anyway, because it's supposed to be first come, first serve policy with it. So did we send people there? They were turned away, so we followed, just came down here. They kept turning people away, so we came down here. Uh, Red Cross did great with us. They uh, put us up in the hotel for three days, and then uh, CMHA put us in the Lotus for three days, and then that was pretty much the end of uh, We're just waiting for housing to open up somewhere or something. Hey, you gotta get out. Not that you didn't do anything wrong, but yeah. So you gotta get housing help. That's for sure. Yeah. Of all different. Yeah. Sizes, types. Sizes, types. Low income, accessibility. Just even just for people that need a place to live. Everybody here is capable of paying rent. They just need a place to rent. 
Say that again, Chris, because that's important. Everybody here is capable of paying rent. They just need a place to rent. These are all, it kind of makes a perspective is that everybody that's here at one point or another came to my house for shelter, food, uh, clothing, laundry, showers. So like, this is the amount of people that we had through one house. How many people would you say are here then? Sometimes 20? 15, sometimes 40. Yeah. Like it varies, but yeah. 15 to 40 average. Yeah. 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 So. Thanks for speaking. What's that? This is, it's, uh, but, but you know what? I think um, it's important that you enforce bylaws. You can't just, uh, you can't not enforce bylaws. Well, now and they're saying there's this into... precedent with Waterloo and it's a charter rights infringement and. I, look, I don't, I think I'll, I maintain my position that you got to enforce bylaws. You got to enforce bylaws. We have bylaws and laws for a reason. You got to enforce them. And you got to get people to, to places like Transition House and others. Now look, speaking to that guy, there's a gentleman there that's trying to help people. And look, I commend him too uh, for trying to help and trying to, you know, help others. But um, but definitely, you know, we have social, a good social services department that the province works with here in the county. A lot of good staff trying to make a difference. And we're all trying to work together. And we increased homelessness funding by 50% this year. Um, and those dollars got to get to the grassroots level to support people and we're working closely with them. I know the county met with the town today is my understanding. Um, you know, and, and it's important that they're meeting, it's important that we're supporting because the county's got seven lower tiers to support. Mm -hmm. uh, Coburg's obviously the biggest and deals with the most issues, so. Okay, well thank you for your time. Yeah, yeah thank you. Oh, sorry, one last question for me. What yeah. do you think after taking a, a walk through, what do you think of what you it's saw? It's sad, Pete. It's sad that we have this many um, you know that we have this in our, our community and people feeling they've got nowhere to go and um, but you know as well we've got to we've got to enforce bylaws in our communities and we've got a, a shelter here a transition house my understanding there's beds available and wraparound supports and I know people don't always want to uh, help all the time and you have to be there for when they do and and we've got a shelter and the province is supporting it so good thank you